Uh, my name is Cal Everett. I'm the president and CEO of Liberty Gold. Um, Liberty Gold is focused on exploring the Great Basin for oxide, bulk tonnage, open pitable oxide heap leach deposits. I will be making some forward-looking statements in this uh, presentation. And uh, Liberty Gold is a bit of a different company because we have ownership interests in seven discoveries in Turkey and we own four past producing oxide heap leach mines that operated in the 90s in a $300 gold market and I'm only going to focus today on talking about um, two of those oxide gold systems. One's in Utah and one's the new Black Pine project in Idaho. And Black Pine is the one that's gathering a lot of market interest now and we're drilling at both of these projects concurrently at the same time. For the history of this company, this team has got or advanced eight deposits into production that are profitable gold mines today. The same exploration team for Liberty found the Long Canyon mine, which was sold to Newmont in 2012 for $2.3 billion, another oxide heap leach system. As of two months ago, a small pissant little deposit we found years ago that only had 300,000 ounces that we got rid of. The Regent mine went into production, and we have a 15% NPI on that producer and we should be getting paid on that NPI based on stackable ounces of gold on the heap leach pads uh, as, as of next year. And we can raise money. We have a strong cash position. We focus on being in stable geopol geopolitical jurisdictions where we can actually build a mine and permit, and we're looking for low capex heap leach oxide gold systems that have to have the capability of producing a minimum of 100,000 ounces of oxide with a minimum 10-year mine life. If we don't see it, we're going to move the projects off and we bring another one in. Our ownership interests on the projects, Gold Strike, Black Pine, and Kinsley are just three of them. They'll all be drilled this year and our respective ownership interests are shown on that page. Management, I'm the president and CEO and I'm 25 years as a, I'm a geologist but 25 years as a sell side banker. Uh, chairman of the board, Mark O'Day and Moira Smith, the VP of Exploration. She's responsible for every one of these discoveries, inclusive of all seven discoveries in Turkey. Shares outstanding, 207.6 million shares. The Van Eck Fund, which is not the GDXJ, with their warrants, owns 18% of the Liberty Gold now. The RCF Fund out of Denver and Perth, Australia, with their warrants, now have 14% of the company. Newmont has 6.7% from a, a legacy uh, investment in Frontier Gold before they purchased the company. Tech Corporation has 3.9. Management Insiders have 6.6% of the company, and we continue to buy in the market, and we've increased our ownership on every single financing, and I've personally bought it for about 5.8 million shares in the market. The associated analyst coverage is there, and there's another 10 institutions that own stock in this company. So this is what, I'm just going to have three slides on the Gold Strike project, and, I, and I'm just looking at my timing here on the floor. Gold Strike's in Utah, and this was purchased for $7.3 million at an interpretation by Moira Smith, our geologist, that it was another Carlin sedimentary hosted gold system in the Great Basin, and it had a minimum target size that she wanted. That's just an artist's impression of what that looks like. This is what it looks like after two years of drilling. So we published a PEA last year, and this, some PEAs are crap and some of them are good. So this was done by SRK, Capus, Newmont's chief metallurgist, and there are 1,700 drill holes in that economic study. So that's the difference between a good, you can do a PEA in 30 holes, but you, can put, but you don't put that many holes in here. And you need to get to measured and indicated this resource of about 75 million tons, that's 75% measured and indicated already, and 25% is inferred. Anything in purple has oxide gold intercepts over a massive area, and that's seven kilometers from northeast to southwest. Everything in purple has not got sufficient drill density to pull it into a pit, to make it, to make it pit constrained. So right now we're looking at a seven and a half year mine life based on this, and the resource has increased with another 30,000 meters of drilling, so now we're looking at about nine years at about 100,000 ounces of production. It's around 1.35 to 1.4 million ounces whenever we figure out what that resource is. The payback is short, 2.3, and what works on this deposit is the metallurgy is unique, and I'm going to get to that. All in sustaining costs is 793 an ounce. CapEx to build it is 129 
29.4% IRR at the current gold price, and we excluded silver because we did not have the, uh, enough silver assays. And that adds about a point and a half to the after-tax IRR. So if gold goes up 100 bucks an ounce, the after-tax IRR on this project goes up by six points. That's as easy as that when you're looking at the gold price. This is what Great Basin operating heap leach gold mines, what the average grade is in the Great Basin today. They're insanely low grades. The average grade is 0.53 grams, ex excluding Long Canyon, which we found, which weighs the number. Uh, the average recovery is 70.3%. Uh, what our re grade that we've calculated, a 0.2 gram cut of, is 0.48. It's lower than the grades, but our recoveries are 78% plus. And we just put this metal second round of metallurgy out the other day. This is what is material about this, this project. You get 80% of your leachable gold cyanide soluble in eight days. It cash flows like a dream. And this is why there's interest in the project. It's got size, a scale, and, but it leaches well. The second project I'll spend a few minutes on is Black Pine. And this, from east to west, is four kilometers. And from, uh, from the valley floor to the peak is three kilometers. It's a 12 square kilometer oxide gold system that our geologists identified. We bought this for approximately one million US two years ago, and we're now drilling it as of a few weeks ago. And it's permitted, and I'll go through exactly how big this thing is. And it's unique. When we bought it, it had a few hundred holes in it. We found the database, and this compilation you're going to see is 18 months' work with two geologists, digitized everything, and 1,875 drill holes are in this presentation. And we didn't have to pay for them. This is the plan of operations. Anything surrounded in gray is the plan of operations. So we can go anywhere, any time of the year, and put roads and drill sites in 7.3 square kilometers. The target is exposed for 12 square kilometers, but the state of Utah of Idaho wouldn't give us uh, our, a permit if we went too big on the whole target. So we took with what we, were, what we wanted to go play with. All the gray is gone. They stack 685,000 ounces of gold out of those gray zones. Those are the five pits that Pegasus mined when they went bankrupt and shut the mine down on a day's notice in 1997. Anything in gold has a 25 meter buffered, and that's a mineable cutoff grade of 0.3 grams gold over a mining width, and that's what they left behind. All the overlying soil samples on this target are in the squares. They run effectively undrilled for four and a half square kilometers, 0.1 to one gram gold in soil on top of the target. So we can now show this is one big, large interlocking system. This is what it looked like when we got the data. And five pits, the average pit depth, and they're dry, actually go down to about 100 meters, and all those pits are dry. All the water that comes off this property and groundwater goes into the dry part of the Great Salt Lake. It has road, power, and water to the mine gate. And so it's blessed environmentally where it is. It's about four miles from the Utah border. This is the tenure of some of the historical mine gold grades in each one of, the, of one from each of those pits. You can see the widths and you can see the extreme grades that are over twice what we're seeing in oxide gold mines today. And this is what the data compilation showed. And on this map, we can differentiate now geologically where we are in the system. There's no gold in the yellow rocks. There are sandstone units. So all the fluid flow that's going in here and subsequently was oxidized, that's a kilometer cross section of, and you can see in that gray zone, this is a half square kilometer AA to AB cross section. It's really unique. All the oxide gold that's left behind is now ore. Anything that says target zone on is undrilled, and we've drilled 77 meters of 1.49. We just released three more super high grade holes. And either 60% or to 35% of every one of these holes is above cutoff oxide, and we're now drilling down to 900 feet, and there's no sulfide to 900 feet. That's how big this system is. So in our modeling where it says the word target zone, it actually gives us room for another 125 million tons within a half a square kilometer. And it's a 12 square kilometer target. And we can draw you, you can go see it on the website, but there's two and a half kilometer long cross sections that crisscross this property now over the whole area. And you can see all the oxide gold that's left behind. What's key is it's a, it's a thrust uh, imprint here, thrust faults, low angle faults, and those calcite breaches are collapsed breaches, and the, and the mineralization goes above and below them. And the historical mining, as soon as they hit these calcite breaches, they shut the drilling down at 300 feet. 
So now we're taking it down to 900 feet and we're hitting multiple zones as we go down. So this is, this is kind of the big target. We published in, in our news release a, a 4 million ounce gold target on this thing and we think we're going to, based on what we've come out with and what we've released, that we're going to be low on that number. This is what we're doing now. So this is effectively, gray is gone. Anything outside of the gray is now above cutoff grade ore. We just drilled uh, 14, 15, and 16, taking our model, and we've now got four more hole pending on this one zone, and it all looks the same. And it's a new geological interpretation, and it's got multiple zones in each hole. So it's, I've got no seconds left, but it's unique. <laughs> and I'm done.